Jack and the Beanstalk, retold by Richard Walker, illustrated by Niam Sharkey. I'm not going to start by saying that Jack was lazy. When there was an adventure in the offing, he was not lazy at all. But most of the time, he just did a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Jack lived with his mom and Daisy the cow in a tumble-down farmhouse a little way out of town. Jack's mom liked to do just a little bit of this and a little bit of that as well. They didn't have very much money, but they didn't much care. Then, one day, there was nothing left to eat, not even a crust of old bread and no money left either to buy anything. It's no good, Jack, his mom said. We'll have to sell poor old Daisy. You had better get up early tomorrow morning and take her to market. Make sure you get a good price for her. Jack knew better than to argue. Besides, he was very hungry. So, the next day, he got up at sunrise and set off down the lane with Daisy in tow. He had not gone far when he came around a corner and bumped into a funny little man. The man was wearing a big baggy jacket with big baggy pockets. Good morning to you, said the man. That's a nice looking cow you have there. Do you fancy doing a swap for her? Jack remembered what his mom had told him, so he asked. What will you give me in exchange? This, declared the funny little man, and plunging a hand dip into one of his pockets, he pulled out six plump beans. Those, asked Jack. Yes, said the funny little man. This, don't think these are just ordinary beans. Oh no, these are magic beans. But you will have to be careful with them. I've lost the instruction for them, so I'm not sure what they do. Well, there was nothing Jack loved better than magic, so he handed over Daisy, took the beans, and hurried home. As soon as he reached the back door, Jack burst into the kitchen and proudly threw the beans down on the table. What's this? exclaimed his mom. They're magic beans, mom. I swapped them for Daisy. At least we've got something to eat. Well, we will have when they've grown. Jack's mom was furious. She went white in the face and shouted and stumped. Then she threw open the window and flung the beans outside. That night, Jack and his mom went to bed feeling miserable and hungry. But in the garden, things began to happen. The beans slipped down through cracks in the ground. Their roots wriggled deep into the earth and shoots pushed upwards. They burst through the hard crust of the soil, and twisting and tangling together, they grew high into the sky. They kept on growing and growing, until they reached the land of the clouds. <laughs> then, a long wiry tendril reached down to the house and tapped on Jack's bedroom window. Who's that? Jack yawned. He saw strange shadows in the moonlit window, and not sure whether this was a dream or a real adventure, he padded across the room and drew back his curtains. There, bending and swaying in the moonlight, was the most enormous beanstalk he had ever seen. I wonder where the top of it goes to? Jack said to himself. There was only one way to find out. Without stopping to think twice, he clambered over the window sill and started to climb. Soon, the house was just a tiny top, far below, still he made his way upwards. Finally, he reached the land of the clouds and stepped off the beanstalk onto the fluffy gray ground. In the distance, he could see a huge castle. Jack walked straight up to it and knocked on the door. He heard the clunk of keys being turned, the rumble of bars being slid back, and the rattle of chains being unfastened. <laughs> the 
Then at last the huge door cricked open a crack and he saw a little old woman peering at him by the light of a candle. You can't come in, she whispered. He'll be back soon. Go away. Please, Jack begged. I'm a stranger here and starving hungry. Can't I just pop in quickly for something to eat? The woman looked at him more closely and saw that he was a nice looking lad with a red smile. Very well, you can come in for a minute, she said, but don't let him catch sight of you. Who's he? asked Jack as they made their way along the dusty castle corridors to the big kitchen. Lining the walls were mounds of huge bulging socks which jingled as Jack brushed against them. The giant, of course. If he catches you, he'll eat you for sure. He's got a foul temper, so you'd better keep out of his way. Hide among the socks if you'll hear him coming. Then, just as she finished speaking, there was a crashing of heavy footsteps outside the room. Jack only just managed to hide behind a heap of socks when the door burst open and in barged the giant. Fee, fi, fo, foom! I smell the blood of a stinky man. Where is he, woman? Where are you hiding him? The giant sniffled his way round the room until he came close to where Jack was hiding. Oh, don't be silly, said the old woman. All you can smell is the stew I've made. I was trying a bowl of it to make sure it was good enough for you. Would you like some? Soon, the giant had slurped his way through an enormous bowl of stew. He belched loudly, then demanded, Fetch me my goose, I want some more gold. The old woman slipped out of the room and was soon back, cradling a huge, very gloomy-looking bird in her arms. Peeping out from his hiding place, Jack watched as the goose began to lay eggs each one made of pure gold. As each egg appeared, the giant put it into a giant egg box. Then he demanded, Now, fetch me my harp. I want some music. Once again, the old woman bustled out of the room and came back holding an exquisite harp made of pure gold. Even the strings were golden. Play, harp, play, shouted the giant. And as if by magic, the room was filled with the most beautiful, gentle music as the strings began to vibrate all by themselves. Soon the giant fell asleep and his snuffling and snoring echoed round the room. Mm -hmm. Jack crept out from his hiding place and quietly began to drag one of the bulging sacks full of gold coins across the kitchen floor. It was very heavy and it jingled as he pulled it, but the giant did not steer. Jack heaved and heaved and dragged the sack right out of the castle, across the cloud, and back to the top of the beanstalk. The sack was too heavy for him to carry any further, so he left it there and slid quickly down. When he reached home, Jack found his mom staring up at the beanstalk and scratching her head. Rope! cried Jack as he sprang to the ground. He ran off to the shed and came back a few moments later with great coils wrapped round him. Then he set off back up the beanstalk. At the top of the beanstalk, Jack tied one end of the rope to the stem and the other to the sack of gold. Then he started to lower the sack. After a while, he felt the rope become loose and he knew that the sack had reached the ground safely and that his mom had untied it. Jack headed back to the kitchen to fetch another sack. As he crept past the giant, the goose looked up hopefully and whispered, Can I come too? I hate it up here. You wouldn't need to take the sack then. I could lay you as many golden eggs as you want. So Jack picked her up and ran out of the room. In the corridor, he bumped into the old woman. Can I come with you as well? She asked. Of course, said Jack. 
Here, you take the goose and I'll go back for the harp. But as Jack picked up the harp, it suddenly cried out, What's going on? Who are you? Help! Help! Jack raced out of the kitchen just as the giant woke up, saw what was happening and began to give chase. Faster and faster ran Jack. Closer and closer came the giant. As he reached the top of the beanstalk, Jack could feel the giant's hand on the hairs of his neck. Quick! he shouted. The old woman started slithering down with the goose. Jack slithered down behind her with the harp. They could hear the giant shouting and swearing as he tried to follow them. The beanstalk bent and swayed wildly, first to the left and then to the right, but the old woman and Jack reached the ground safely. Jack grabbed the rope. He pulled and he pulled until he could see the giant hanging on for dear life glaring down at him. Then he let go. The beanstalk shot upright like an enormous catapult. Unable to hold on any longer, the giant flew off the end. <laughs> he soared away into space and was never seen again. And as far as I know, he's still there. The old woman went inside to make a pot of tea. Mom put the golden harp on the kitchen dresser and Jack made the magic goose a special hut. He put the sack of gold in the cellar and took out a coin whenever he needed to buy something. And the last time I went to visit, the harp played jigs and reels, so we all had a merry dance.